says this about Abraham, and it's a tremendous compliment to Abraham. It says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord through justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. You know, Abraham was consistent in his obedience to God. We see that regardless of what uh, command that God gave Abraham, Abraham was willing to follow that command. He left his own country. He went to a place that God would show him. He settled in the land of Canaan. And even at one point, God demanded him that he sacrifice his own son, Isaac. And he made uh, efforts to do that. And he was about to do it when God stopped him and told Abraham he knew at that point that he would obey him. And so he was very faithful to the Lord. And then he consistently taught his children and his household God's will as well. He taught uh, Abraham, Isaac. And Isaac then was able to pass on those truths to, to his children, Jacob and Esau. And ultimately Jacob was able to pass on those truths to, to his children as well, they, uh, who became then the twelve tribes of Israel. And as a result of Abraham's obedience to God, great blessing was brought upon Abraham's life. And God recognized that it was his obedience and his being able to teach his household and his children that allowed God to then bless him greatly. And would to God that we would have that same attitude toward our families so that God could bring great blessing upon our life as well. But we see in the life of Abraham a, a picture of a family stability in a lot of ways. And spiritually speaking, they had Abraham had a stable family. Uh, and what, when we think about family stability, uh, what do we think about? What, you know, what is the most important thing that you can do to rear your children? And uh, I want us to ask that question here at the outset because the answer may not be what most people think it is. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, uh, to give my child a good education, that's the most important thing I can do. Or, or some might say, well, I want to make sure my child has plenty of wealth. That's the most important thing I can do. Or another might say, I want, I want to ensure that my child uh, can be beautiful because that is, that is important. Or what about sports? That, some might say, I want to, my child to be involved in sports and that would be the most important thing that I can do for my child. Many people take these attitudes and many other attitudes. I don't mean to single these out. There's many different answers that we could fill in here. But I want to submit to you this morning that the most important thing that we can do for our child is to offer our child a spiritually stable environment. To have family stability as being the most important thing. We have here a picture of the Rock of Gibraltar. And maybe you remember the old uh, Prudential Insurance commercials. They would always use the Rock of Gibraltar because they wanted, to, wanted you to get the picture of stability. That their insurance company was the most stable insurance company that there was. And, and the Rock of Gibraltar kind of uh, symbolizes, if you will, stability and, and something that's going to be there and last and uh, uh, give us... Uh, something that we can depend upon, you know, for a long time. Well, that's what I would like, I'd like for us to think about this morning. Family stability is really the most important ingredient for rearing children. Because when we look at the various different studies that psychologists and, and medical professionals have done over the years, they have found that the most detrimental thing to a family is instability. That instability affects all of those other things that uh, we saw earlier, you know, that most people think is being really important, like, like uh, education and, and uh, health and uh, uh, sports and, and all the other things that people kind of think, well, that's the most important thing I can do. But really, it's stability, it's family stability. Because 
Because if their family is not stable, then all those other things are not going to happen. Whether we think uh, they will or not, instability affects the kind of education that your child will ultimately end up receiving. Instability affects the kind of health that your child may have. Instability is going to affect whether or not your child can be involved in sports and many other things. If there is instability in the family, that is going to create other issues. And so numerous studies show that family instability leads to uh, stunted child development. And I want us to recognize this morning that God's Word gives us the formula for having eminently stable families. I mean, very stable families. And if you will think about these things with me this morning, I, I believe that you will see that uh, once we have studied these things, that, that God's Word really provides everything that we need to uh, raise our children or rear our children in a very stable family environment. First of all, we want to think about faithful parents. <coughs> we think about faithful families create the ideal environment in which to rear children because, first of all, they will have uh, faithful parents. And that's the first thing. But then we're going to look at other things as well. We're going to see that uh, when we are faithful to the Lord first and put Him first in our life, not only will the parents be faithful, but we'll have a consistent uh, experience with our spiritual family as well, the church. And then we're going to find, finally, that God provides us unchanging morality. And that these three things together, faithful parents, consistent church, and, and unchanging morality, are going to provide a rock-solid foundation where you can have a stable family and ensure that your child is raised in such a way, or reared in such a way, that um, that they will have a wonderful uh, upbringing. So let's think first of all about faithful families have stability from faithful parents. That's the first point. Faithful families have stability from faithful parents. When we're faithful parents, we're, there's going to be faithfulness in marriage. In Genesis 2 and verse 24, the Bible says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And that is intended to be a relationship that lasts a lifetime. Jesus uh, reflected upon this verse in Matthew 19, the verses 4 through 6, when He said, Have you not read that He who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. It was God's intention from the beginning that there be one man and one woman in marriage and that they be faithful to one another for life. And uh, Jesus only gives one exception for that, and that is when uh, one is unfaithful to another, um, sexually speaking. And so, but that is not, that is the exception, not the rule. The rule is that there is to be one man, one woman for life, and they are to be joined together uh, faithfully to one another. And when uh, family uh, have stability from faithful parents, and faithful parents are going to be faithful in their marriages, first and foremost. Think about what God says here in Malachi chapter uh, three. It says, But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? That is, why did he make the two one flesh? Is the question that Malachi is asking here. And the answer is, he seeks godly offspring. God wants there to be offspring, children, who are who will be godly in their lives and in their development. And that's why he made the two one flesh. That's why God wanted parents to be faithful to each other, husbands to be faithful to wives, and wives to be faithful to husbands, so that there would be a stable environment for rearing children. And so that's why he says in the rest of this verse, Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel said that he hates divorce. 
For it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. God wanted marriage to be a stable environment for rearing children. He does not want divorce. And so faithfulness in marriage will bring faithful parents. But then secondly, as we think about faithful parents, we see that there is to be faithfulness in spiritual instruction. You remember what God said about Abraham? That he instructed his children, he commanded his children to keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment. And uh, that was God's reflection upon Abraham's faithfulness that he instructed his children. God wants faithful parents to instruct their children. Ephesians 6 and verse 4 says, You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but do what? Bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. And so parents are to train and admonish their children in the Lord to instruct them. And that is how they are to consider the uh, relationship that they are to have with their children so that they can give them faithful instruction. Moses wrote this in Deuteronomy 6 and verses 6 through 9 about teaching children. He said, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. What is the picture that he is painting here about parental instruction of children in spiritual things? It is to be 24-7. Parents are to be instructing their children all the time. They are to take every opportunity that they can to teach their children about the Lord and about His ways. And that's what God wants. And if faithful parents will be faithful in their instruction to children, they will have family stability. And then parents need to be faithful in their example as well. You know, children look to their parents, for example, more than anything else in this life. They see their parents as their model. And you can see it. I know those of you who are teachers in school and administrators in school, you know how the parents behave by how the children behave, don't you? You can see it, can't you? And, and that's because the number one model of a child is their parent, their mother or father, however it might be. That's the number one model. And those children are going to do exactly what the parents do in however way that their parents behave. And so we as parents, in looking to uh, provide an example to our children, need to make sure that we are giving them spiritual food to follow in our example. Let your light so shine before men. Let's, let's change that just a little bit and think of it in this way. Let your light so shine before your children that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Of course, children are a, a subcategory of humanity and so that is exactly appropriate in this particular verse as we focus on parenting, as we focus on what we can do to uh, help our children be spiritual and to give them a stable family environment. And then we will be able to say with the Apostle Paul, as he said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. And would to God that each one of us would be able to say that to our children. And so, first of all, when we think about faithful families having stability, Faithful families have stability because they have faithful parents who are faithful in their marriage, who are faithful in giving spiritual instruction, and who are faithful in their example. But then secondly, when we think about uh, faithful families having stability, we see that they get stability from being consistent in church. And, and that is something that we need to consider very seriously, consistent in church. The faithful families are going to prioritize God. They're going to put God first in their life. They're going to
us to remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22 and verses 36 and 37 when He was asked, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus replied what? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and great commandment. In other words, here's the priority. Love God first. Everything else comes after that. But love God first. And we must prioritize God's kingdom within our life. As Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and verse 33. What is the kingdom of God? It is the church. Jesus said in Matthew 16 18, Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the what? The kingdom. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so the kingdom and the church are one and the same. And so we're seeking the kingdom. We are seeking the church. And that's what we ought to be doing as faithful parents. Is putting God first. Putting His church first. Making sure that we are following Him. We start by being consistent in our attendance. And that is so important. When we think about uh, priorities, we don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some. But rather, we want to exhort one another. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. So we need to be consistent in our attendance. And that means prioritizing God, prioritizing His kingdom, prioritizing our attendance. But then secondly, we need to make sure we have a consistent source of spiritual knowledge. Be consistent in our, our efforts with the church. We need to be consistent in our attendance. We need to be consistent with the source of spiritual knowledge. And God is that source. We do have that source. And when we think about who God is and, and His Word and His teaching, that is something we can always depend on. God doesn't change. Malachi 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord. I do not change. He says. And He doesn't repent. God doesn't repent. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that He should lie or son of man that He should repent. As He said, He will not do it. As He spoken, and will He not make it good? And so when God speaks, that is something that you can depend upon. And in Hebrews 13 and verse 8, we see that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And so, in thinking about faithful families, in thinking about having that um, consistent uh, source of, of knowledge, spiritual knowledge, faithful families will have that because they will recognize the unchanging nature of God. And they will recognize the uh, stability of the truth of God's Word. And then they will be willing to put that into practice. And they will be willing to teach it to their families as well. We have this consistent source of spiritual knowledge. And it is not going to change. And so there is consistency there in our efforts with the church. And then also consistent spiritual instruction. When we What we get from consistent attendance and having a consistent source of spiritual knowledge is then a consistent set of spiritual instruction. And this our families need in order for them to be stable. When we don't have consistent spiritual instruction, then our families are going to go any which way that the wind blows. And that may be the way we want or the way we don't want. It's going to, and people are going to uh, do whatever they want to do in that uh, environment. Uh, and one day it will be one thing, the next day it will be another thing. Whatever that might be. But there will be no consistency because there was not taught any consistency from the Word of God. But those who are faithful in their families, those who are faithful parents, those who are faithful in their attendance, those who are faithful with the church, they are going to find consistency. They are going to find stability in their homes. Why? Because God is faithful. First of all, because the church is stable. Secondly, and here because they will receive consistent spiritual instruction. Peter was not ashamed of providing spiritual, consistent spiritual instruction to those that he taught. He said, I won't be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you. Knowing that shortly 
Lastly, I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. And he wrote these things down. And we're still reading them today. He's still reminding us today. Why? Because he wanted there to be consistency of teaching. He wanted that stability to be present in the church. Paul also said in 1 Timothy 3.15, But if I am delayed, I write, so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the what? The pillar and the ground of the truth. That's what the church is supposed to be, a pillar. What is a pillar? It is a firm, stable support, so that that upon which it sits, or that which sits upon it, will not uh, fall. Uh, a pillar is there to, to support things, to hold things up. A ground, a ground is there to ensure that there is stability um, in the structure. And that is what the church is. It provides a place that is stable. It provides stable spiritual instruction and consistent instruction as well. And so, for a family to be faithful and to have stability, there needs to be consistency with the church. And there will be consistency with the church if we will be faithful to the Lord. But then finally, as we look at these uh, three thoughts regarding stability, we come to the last point, and that is that there is unchanging morality. Faithful families create stability because they have unchanging morality. They have faithful parents, they have consistency with the church, and they have unchanging morality. The world's morality changes on a daily basis. You think about cultural relativism. It was a very popular way of looking at morality today. It basically says what is right is whatever the culture decides is right. If the culture decides that uh, it's right to, to engage in, in uh, uh, what the Bible calls sinful things, well then it's right to do that regardless of what the Bible says because the culture decides that. But the culture can change. And we're seeing the consequences of some of that today. The consequences of the culture being one way a hundred years ago and the way it is now today, some people today are condemning the way the culture was a hundred years ago and rejecting it. And they're saying it shouldn't have been that way. And now, uh, today, they're saying it should be the way that we say it should be. Cultural relativism. There is no consistency there, though. It changes from one generation to the next. Hedonism. Hedonism says, and a lot of people live their life based on this principle, that is, just do whatever makes me feel good in the moment and get all the pleasure that I can get out of life. That's just hedonism. And, and does that is that a consistent standard? No, it's not. Because what makes you feel one good, good one day won't make you feel good the next day. And you'll have to have more of what makes you feel good the day before. Eventually, that will destroy you. Egoism is a standard that many people use. They say, do whatever promotes your own selfish interests and pursue that. I'm just going to do what's right for me. Protect number one. But is that a consistent standard of morality? Of course not. Because what protects me today may get me in trouble tomorrow. And what I think will get me in trouble today may protect me tomorrow. And there's no consistency there. One day you'll act one way, and the other day you'll act that way. Why? For your selfishness. For your ego's sake. To protect self. Promote your own self-interest. And so you see all of these standards of morality, and any standard of morality that isn't God's standard of morality, is going to change from one day to the next, from one month to the next, from one year to the next. These are not stable foundations upon which to rear children. Children will end up confused and not knowing how to act in any given situation and not knowing what to do. What do we need? We need unchanging morality. And Jesus gives us that unchanging morality by giving us the truth. He gives us the truth. And the truth doesn't change. In John 8 and verses 31 and 32, we read, Jesus said to those Jews who believed Him, 
If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What do we have to do? Abide in His Word. His Word doesn't change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if we abide in His Word, then guess what? We will have the same unchanging morality that Jesus taught. And that truth will do what? It will set us free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. And sanctify them in thy truth. Where is the source of truth? Thy word is truth. And that's what we need to depend upon. That's what we need to rest on. That's the rock that we sang about earlier. We're going to sing about in our uh, invitation song this morning. Jesus is that rock. Jesus is that truth upon which if we will uh, firmly uh, in, in, embed ourselves, that we will be able to have those families that are faithful and consistent and strong and ongoing. And that's what we want. We want this wonderful family environment where we can have faithful parents, have a consistent uh, relationship with the church and in the church and with the church, and have this unchanging morality. Why? For the sake of our children. That's why. So that when they are reared, they will come up in a strong home. And they will be able then to go forth into the world as productive individuals, as faithful Christians, first and foremost, who will then provide a tremendously uh, stable um, personality to engage with society. And that will help everyone in a lot of ways. And so this unchanging morality is what we find also. God's moral standard does not change. Think about the moral standards that God gives us. First of all, the golden rule. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. There is an unchanging principle of morality that we can teach our children. I've taught it to my children ever since they were little bitty. Follow the golden rule. Over and over again, they say, Dad, how should I behave in this situation? I say, follow the golden rule. How do you want other people to treat you? And that's exactly what they did. When they do that, they have success in their lives, morally speaking. Also, we think about the uh, law that Jesus talked about and that Paul talks about, that, that James discusses, and that is the second greatest command, that is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Look at Romans 13 and verses 8 through 10 in that regard, which says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. covet. And if there is any other commandment, are summed up, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. All of the commandments hang on this, you see. Of, of all of the commandments, they can be summed up in this one commandment, Paul says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that is so important. And that is so needed today in our culture, in our society. Jesus says, go even beyond that. Go even beyond loving your neighbor to loving your enemies as well. In Matthew 5, in verses 43 through 45, he says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. God's moral standard is the same today as it was yesterday, as it was a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, since the beginning. Why? Because God doesn't change. He has always desired that men love Him and love their neighbor and that they practice the golden rule and that they live according to His precepts. And so we can follow these great unchanging morals that are presented to us in the Word of God. If we want faithful families, then we will follow these things. And there will be stability. And our children will have stability. 
And they will then be able to be reared in such a way so that they will be faithful to the Lord as well. Faithful families create stability because they have, number one, faithful parents who are faithful to one another, who faithfully teach their children and give faithful examples to their children. Faithful families create stability because they will have a consistent uh, consistency with the church. Consistency in attendance, consistency in instruction, and consistency in um, a, a spiritual knowledge of God and the source being God Himself. And then faithful families will have stability because they will have unchanging morality. They will not succumb to the change, changing morality of the world, but rather... They will follow and participate in the truth that Jesus gives us. And that truth then is represented in these uh, three things that we've discussed. The golden rule, loving our neighbor and loving our enemies. And of course, there are many other things the Word of God teaches. The Word of God stays the same. As Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them in thy truth, thy word is truth. If we follow the Word of God within our families are faithful to it, then we will then receive great blessing. And our families will be faithful and stable and strong. And they will fulfill the purposes that God has set us to fulfill within our lives for His honor and for His glory. And so this morning, as we think about faithful families, we know that faithful families create stability. Has your family been creating stability? Has your family been faithful? I hope it has. And many of, many of our families have been. And we see evidence of that. And we want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in your family this morning. But maybe there are some who need the prayers of the church in that regard. And you would like to ask for those prayers this morning that your family would remain faithful and would stay stable for the sake of your children. And this morning, if you need to request those prayers, then we certainly encourage you to do that. Or if there's some other matter that you would like to discuss or to have prayed for this morning, certainly this is an opportunity for you to take advantage of that. Or maybe you've been looking at these things and thinking, you know, I want my family to be like that, but I, I don't know where to start. I'm not a Christian. How do I become one? How do I start down this wonderful path that the Bible has set for us to have as families? Well, you can do that by listening to the words of Jesus and believing them, repenting of your sins, confessing Him as Lord, and being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And that will start you on the right path. You will then be able to live by the truth that Jesus has taught. And He will be your unwavering foundation in life. And that anywhere you go, you can then exemplify Him by following His Word and doing His will. And that will bring great stability to your life and to all of those who are in your life as well. And so this morning, if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, you can do so now while again we stand and while we sing the song of the